it's been tough for me. I know y'all understand, man, and have been missing me. I'm making songs, I just, I don't know how to put them into words even though I wrote them. Oh, Sty, I need your help, man. Freestyle the lyrics I wrote, my boy. I miss y'all, I love y'all. We still in the RV with heat. Podcasting for two years. Now we don't even speak. You know that I come back, so here's episode 63. I've been missing y'all comments lately. Scrolling on my phone. YouTube has been nice, but team I feels like home. Been going to bed at night. Without y'all, I feel so alone. But you're still my team, and Myers. Yeah, you're still my. You're still my team, and Myers. Yeah, you're still my. No, no. How are we here, especially after last episode? Honestly, it's so funny to me. And no one, uh, no one else. <sighs> Why do I look fucking jacked right now? TMI. I'm gonna give two warnings to this episode. One, if you are not aware of who my friend Austin McBroom is, um, some of this is gonna be confusing, and you're probably wondering if I'm on drugs. Number two, come watch on visual. Whether you're on Spotify, YouTube, whatever platform you are on. I think most of you go on spot, on the spot, t Come hop on the, the visualizer. If you're not, you can listen to the episode anyways because most of you like listening. So I apologize. But just for the beginning part, you're going to want to, um, you're going to want to see what's going down. Why haven't I looked at the camera once actually, as I've been saying that. Anyways, guys. Hi. Welcome back to Was That TMI? You may be thinking, what's going on today? Um... <laughs> I don't want to get emotional. So I. One sec. <laughs> I can't even look at myself. I've been out in LA. Hell And I call it hell You guys know I don't like LA and I'm going to keep calling it hell And this just goes to show why. I've been out in LA. I have had a friend out there who who has needed some help. Um, he <laughs> he has recently been going through kind of a midlife crisis. Um, recently going through a divorce. I went out there, helped him find a place to live. I recommended a trailer. He named it Trevor. He's living in there right now. We did go on a road trip about two days ago. He's big into music, just like me. So I'm just helping him through his breakup, pretty much. I just got home yesterday. I ran out of clothes while I was there. I'm literally in all of his apparel right now. <laughs> okay, guys, I'm cutting the shit. I don't even know how I was going to start this fucking episode with that whole bit. Basically, the other day, let me just give you guys the rundown if you're living under a motherfucking rock. Because I've had a lot of people be like, who the fuck is this guy that you keep talking about that you're going and helping in LA? What? Okay, it's all a bit. It's all a fucking joke. But basically, y'all, there's this guy named Austin McBroom, the Ace family. How do people not know what that is? So many of my friends recently are like, what? What are you doing? And I'm like, you have not fucking seen that. What? Ace family, family full of YouTubers. They have had so much speculation about like their marriage, cheating, so much shit. I don't even know. I don't pay attention to it. But like it's just been so big that it's been a thing. They're like a popular family. They had their gender reveal at Kylie Jenner's house. Like just shit, whatever. So basically the husband and wife, Austin, Aust, and Catherine are getting a divorce right now. So Austin has been on his Snapchat every day vlogging and he lives in a fucking RV and it's become this huge meme on at least my side of TikTok of like, oh my God, I'm Austin through a breakup. Like I go fucking manic mode, like insane. Like he's losing it. And here's what he did. He bought a fucking trailer. That's what he's living in right now. He puts out a song, a sad song. You guys know I've been into my music shit lately. None of it will come out ever by the way puts out a song then that might be it that might be our only similarities he also 
does though literally vlog his everyday move on snapchat and the man i'm gonna be honest is a fucking genius because he's literally doing the weirdest dumbest shit on snapchat and snapchat i've told you guys before for whatever reason pays people so much fucking money he has got to be making so much money because it is so big and so funny if you don't know what i'm talking about go look either look him up on youtube instagram snapchat maybe not instagram i don't think he's posting on there a lot tiktok you can it's just like funny shit that he's doing and then the other i made a joke the other day on my instagram because i haven't uploaded in a while well actually let's start the other day i make a tiktok and i'm like oh my god guys they say when you're going through a breakup to do retail therapy i went and bought a fucking trailer like i literally pulled an austin mcbroom and then everyone was like no he pulled a you babe like you did it first then i go on my instagram and i'm like hey was that tmi i'm actually out in la visiting austin right now trying to help him through his breakup and people were like like going along with it like oh my god you're so nice like such a good friend i can't believe you gave him the advice to get a tracy just like your trailer because we filmed this podcast in a trailer if you're new here you're probably really confused and already clicked off the episode so it doesn't even matter but it was funny so then yesterday i'm on snapchat and of course i'm watching his stories because it's hilarious but i actually might have saw this on tiktok you guys know this i have this orange hat that was given to me from a friend a very long time ago Um, He gave me like eight Von Dutch vintage hats that he said someone else gave to him. So he just randomly gave them to me and I was like, oh my God, Von Dutch, like that's like vintage, whatever. Yeah, I want that. So I take these eight hats and I keep this one. I think I literally only have one left. It's this orange camouflage hat that says Von Dutch on it. I go and I look at his story yesterday after I have already posted the thing about being with him in LA, completely joking, but was that TMI Instagram loved it. If you don't follow me on Instagram for was that TMI I'd rather you follow was was that TMI than my personal account because was that TMI is way funnier. Or I go on his Snapchat. This man is wearing the fucking orange Von Dutch hat that I have. And I'm like, I have literally never seen any other soul with that hat in my life. What are the coincidences? So then I post that on my Instagram. Like I'm sharing my hat with him, whatever. It was just a whole bit. It was funny. And then I was like, you know what? I can't do all this and not come on was that TMI today Dress like the motherfucker. This is literally how the motherfucker goes out in public. I don't judge at all because it's basically how I go out in public, but he's just funny as fuck. Honestly, he, there's girls being like, he's getting me through my breakup, like by how fucking weird and odd he's acting he actually is acting like how a female who processes a breakup correctly would act you fucking go manic a little bit you go manic you're sad you're mad you're happy you're mad you're sad you're happy honestly funny as fuck so we have his i'm actually gonna i have a cheetah print I, i'm not exactly sure how you pronounce a bonnet bonnet on top of my head um he always wears his whack-ass fucking slippers some pj fucking pants and a wife beater we're twinning with him today i'm actually gonna start sleeping in this thing that's on my head right now because my hairdresser said that it's actually good to sleep in them and i've heard a lot of girls say that it's good to sleep in them so i'm going to try i've been watching love island uk that's also been taking up a lot of my time recently a lot of the girls on there sleep in these and they say that they're very good so i'm gonna start sleeping in them um it's also good for curly hair sir Anyways, how are we doing? How are we feeling? Um, You're probably like, yeah, you little bitch. Where have you been? Yeah, I know. I've been um, in this thing called near death. I last episode came on here. I've been dreading podcasting, y'all. I'm not even going to lie. I've been dreading it. Maybe I should take this out for the rest of the episode so you guys know it's me. It's not Aust, baby. I've been dreading doing an episode because I don't want to come on here and talk about sad shit. Bailey, my friend Bailey was talking about the other day. She was like, I love the podcast, but I don't want to go on there and like complain or just be sad. And I don't really have anything else to talk about right now in my life. And I'm like, I feel that winter, not a lot goes on. We talked about that last episode. You got to kind of form your own routine. People like say wintering is so isolating because you really just have to like love yourself and be with yourself. (sighs) I can only love myself so much. Um, I'm going a little bit fucking manic. Alex Earl did the 30 day hard. She came online. She was like, I loved it. I feel healthy. I feel great. Will I ever be doing it again? No. Why? I had way too much time to think. I didn't have enough going on to where I had to think all the time. I didn't have enough activity in my life to just like all I was doing was overthinking and I was getting anxiety and shit. Yeah, that's me. Um, Actually, 365 day hard pretty much. So no, I'm kidding. But You guys know last year went through some shit and then coming into this year, to be quite frank with y'all, 
<laughs> um, I don't have really any friends. And you guys are probably like, bitch, shut the fuck up. Like, you're hanging out with randos all the time. You're right. I am hanging out with randos all the time. I don't have a friend group. I don't have a best friend. I don't have someone that it's like every day we're talking to each other. But I don't have that. I don't have that. And um, that's a weird feeling. It's a really weird feeling. And, you know, I like accepted it. I've just been like, okay, it's fine. I feel like here's my situation just to give it to you guys and what I've been doing and shit. Basically, you know, I love YouTube. I love the podcast. I love what I do. It's great. It's awesome. I am so blessed and grateful. Like I'm really, really grateful for my situation and where I am in life. Compared to an average 20-year-old, I'm at like a different spot in my life than most. I'd be the fucking sophomore in college right now. So it's kind of like I relate it somewhat to like athletes I know who went straight to like the pros or not the pros, but like, you know, who didn't go to college and signed contracts and went to like whatever leagues. I don't even know what the fuck it's called. Remember that boy I met in LA who played on the Dodgers? Two of them didn't go to college. They were drafted straight out of high school. They say the same type of shit. They're like, yeah, you know, you don't go to college, so you don't meet friends in college, and then all your friends are in college, but you're kind of in this real world situation. And to be fair, here's the thing with what I do. If you don't have friends, if you're not in college, if you're not in an area where you're doing things constantly with other people, this job is so isolating. Once again, before people come at me and say, shut the fuck up, you fucking bitch. I love it. I would not trade it for the world, but it's so isolating when you don't have that shit. So for me, I live with my family and you know, you would think the solution is like, bitch, fucking move, move somewhere where you're around people. You want to move somewhere where you like know one person and you'll meet people through those people. Right. So I've just been in this mindset lately of like, I need to move out because if I don't move out, the only way I'm going to meet people is through DMs. And we've seen how that's gone down (laughs) the past three fucking years. I saw this thing come up in my Snapchat memories and it was like remembering when I flew across the country to meet a boy and I was like embarrassed in the TikTok audio. And I was like, I've done that twice now. Really? I've done that fucking twice now. Flew across the country to meet a boy twice now. I'm not, I'm only 20. What the fuck? Not okay. I've actually thought about it. <laughs> you know, I could just find another guy and like date someone because I can travel and see them. And then like summer comes around, they can travel and see me. But I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because then I'm always like, what am I doing? So I was like, all right, I need to move. And I could move back up to Atlanta where I know like three girls from high school. Um, they all are in relationships, working, have graduated college, kind of in like a situation similar to me of life where they're going into like the work setting, not trying to sound like I'm like this working my ass off bitch, but you know, I don't want to move to a college town. I don't because it's just like, I feel like I've done that. I've already had that period, not saying I'm like done with partying, but I've had like the college period. I feel like I've just done it. I'm over it. I'm sure people in college even feel that way. My grade will be seniors next year, even though I could be a year lower. My I went into school early when I was younger, so my grade will be seniors next year. And I even have some people that are like, I'm honestly over it already. Like, I can't wait to get out of college. Um and, you know, I think college is where you meet a lot of friends. Like, like my brother asked me, this was so sad. I was on the phone with my brother last night and he goes, so Sadie, like, if you were to have a wedding, who would be, like, your bridesmaids? <laughs> and I was like, um, it's like, you know, and I was like, probably these two. And I was like, and then our neighbors that we grew up with. I don't have friends. Like, I, I genuinely don't have I have friends, but if anyone was to name off their friends, I don't think they would see me. So that's cool. I really gotten over it though. It doesn't make me that sad anymore. It's more just the situation I was put in. I didn't have a ton of friends in high school. I kind of 
I did this like I was very focused on this and then I had like two girls and then you know as you grow up friendships fade apart and now I'm fucking a loner so that's dope anyways though back to the topic I was like I gotta move out because if I don't move out I'm sitting in this house we live in the middle of fucking nowhere we live in the middle of nowhere. My mom even said it to me too. She was like, yeah, if I was 20, I would probably be saying what you're saying right now too. Like, I know you're grateful that you have a roof over your head, but I also would probably be wanting to leave too. So I get moved back to Atlanta, but it's like, you know, those people, God, I can feel the ADHD coming out of my veins right now. I'm sorry, guys. Sorry. What's that TMI? First off, <laughs> the three people I know do indeed have boyfriends. Um, and you know, when you're post college and you have a boyfriend, that's where a lot of your time's going. No judgment at all. I completely understand it. So it's not really a scene of like going out and meeting people. They're kind of just chilling and I respect it. But do I think that's where I should go? Probably not. I love Florida. I love the warm weather. It's not warm where I live right now, but I definitely think I want to stay in Florida unless there's like a reason for me to be somewhere else work-wise and there's not really. So I think I want to stay in Florida and actually about two weekends ago, my friend Vandy, Mr. Freezer Tarps, how much about a woodchuck chuck or woodchuck cut up upper decky lippy, upper decky lip pillow third. (laughs) If you don't know him, he was the one who I went down to Morgan Wallen in Tampa with last year, him and his whole friend group. Um, there was something called Gasparilla going on in Tampa, which is basically, I guess, like the Mardi Gras parade of Tampa could be wrong, but I was like, yo, please, can I come? I need to get out of my house. He was like, yeah, sure. So I go down to Tampa, I get a hotel and I've actually been, I've been considering moving to Tampa because it's kind of a city where there's just like younger people and whatever. Um, Went down there, got a hotel, not going to lie, was sitting in my hotel room the night before the next day where we were going out. And I was like, oh my God, like, I hate this. I just hate being alone. I hate being alone. I can do it. I'm an independent person, I will say. But do I like it? No. Like who, I don't think a lot of people enjoy being alone all the time. And I've been so fucking isolated. It's not even funny. Um, I was literally sitting in the hotel and I was debating on going down to the fucking valet man and asking him what he was doing that night because he was nice when I pulled in. And I was like, no, see, first of all, dangerous. Second of all, Uh, and that's the thing too guys I'm only fucking 20 I'm a 20 year old girl I get scared doing these things like I genuinely was a little bit freaked out so I'm sitting in this hotel the next day Vandy and them come get me we go to this like pregame Nelk boys showed up I'm like damn 16 year old me would be screaming we're all just having a good time we go out it's fun fun weekend there actually was a girl there she's so cute that I hung out with and I actually love so much she was so funny um And then, you know, I wake up, guys, actually, I wake up that night after we've been out all day in Tampa and I wake up to Vanty and he's like, Sadie, Sadie, you got to get up. You got to get up. And I literally just start fucking crying. It like kind of brought me sober though. Like I was kind of like, whoa, what the fuck? I like start crying and I'm like, dude, I'm so done with this shit. Like I feel so alone because you know, the saying I don't know if this is a saying, maybe it's just me, but it's like when you feel more lonely when you go out versus than when you did at home, it kind of felt like that. Like it was kind of like I was with all these people who I felt like were all like friends and I was kind of like an outsider and I felt more lonely there than I even do at my house alone. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, ma'am. We cannot be feeling that way. That's not fucking okay. I like, why was 17, 18 year old me just such a fucking badass? I did everything alone. Remember that summer when I traveled like across the country 50 different times and I was in a different fucking spot every week by myself. I was just by myself catching flights, driving 10 hours, doing so much random shit. I don't know how I did it. Maybe I enjoyed it then because it was like my first time for all of it. And now that I've done it for a little bit, I'm like, I don't want to do these things alone anymore. Who fucking knows? This sounds like I need a fucking husband, honestly, doesn't it? Anyways, though, I was just kind of like 
having a little bit of a breakdown and he was like Sadie you have to understand like I met all of these guys through college he was like you didn't go to college so you didn't have that experience he was like it's fine you just need to move out of your house you're gonna find somewhere that you like and then you're gonna meet people like it's gonna be okay he was like it's just you're in a different position than most and honestly it did like make me feel better because I was just like that is so true I just didn't have that experience that most people do and I think college would have been an act like it would have been a different experience doing what I do and I even every time I would go and visit friends I knew I didn't want to be there like I I wanted to be there for the weekend but I knew I didn't want to go to college Bailey Dedrick Dedrick she's been on the podcast I pronounce her last name wrong still um she's in the same boat as me like she's like I know I didn't want to go and I've gone and seen friends but I know I would not want to be there but she's kind of in my shoes she lives in her town she grew up in she has a boyfriend but she doesn't really know where she wants to go it's scary just up and moving to a new city alone and the thing is too even if you move to a new city you're by yourself and you're going to work there or whatever even though you might not have friends, it's like you kind of have coworkers that you're going to meet, whatever. It just kind of feels more safe. That's like my thing is I'm like, we live in a fucking scary world and you can't just use that as an excuse forever. Like you have to go out and live your life, but it is creepy. And then also in my shoes, my motherfucking ass is Austin McBrooming my Snapchat all damn day long. And I don't have to do that, but like it is a part of my fucking job. So it's just like, it's creepy. Like if I literally moved down to Tampa got an apartment let's say and I'm in my apartment building and some older guys like hey I follow you on snapchat I'm gonna be like I don't live here I don't live here by the way it's creepy I get scared and then I'm like oh I'll just go get an airbnb that's even fucking creepier like I'm just I get sketched out I get sketched out by myself I think a lot of girls would it's sadly the world we live in today and that's why it's just always been nice to when I had my best friend if I was invited anywhere or any trip I was going on I wasn't going unless she could come with me and then it's like I had a boyfriend for a while because if I want to go places I don't want to go alone I don't want to do it alone even if it's not going places I necessarily want to go but I can go do something with someone else fucking you know what I mean like I just I like to go 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 not even 24 7 but just I can't sit at my house all the time I'm not like a at home type person I'm just not unless I have something I'm like super passionate about that's why I've kind of been like seriously not seriously but looking into like music and shit lately because I do enjoy it and it's something that you just kind of do it at home like or you're going to a studio not that I would do that like you just do shit at home and it's like I don't want to reach a point of loneliness where I become a different person because I'm not an introvert like you I'm a very extroverted person being around people fills my cup up whereas if you're an introvert being around people almost like empties your glass you know that's like a good saying being around people fills my glass and I've been just honestly I feel like I'm stuck that's how it's felt it's felt like I've been like stuck and it's just been demotivating I guess and I know I'm just being a pussy ass bitch and I need to get the fuck up and I have been I've been getting up I've been working out almost every day I'm so sore right now it's not even funny but I've been forcing myself to like even if I'm waking up at 2 p.m I wake up I work out I'm trying to like eat at home I have my coffee at home I'm not going to Dunkin every day anymore even though there's nothing wrong with that but just I'm trying to like get more in a healthy routine and I feel fine. I'm a happy person. I'm very grateful. I just feel like I'm in a weird spot right now. It feels very weird. It feels very isolating. And I get sad. And I have four days where I'm fine. And then I have four days where I'm not. And it's just kind of uncontrollable. It's just my emotions right now. Um, but I don't want to fucking come on here and like be sad and be like guys I don't know what to do I fucking hate that shit I'm bored of it I don't want to do that anymore um that's why I like when I have things going on because I talk about what I've been doing and then I talk about things that like me I thought of in the time of doing them and just whatever 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 but I haven't been doing a lot recently I've kind of just been chilling so that's been 
my life, um, you know, and I don't really like going on my phone a lot. When I first met a new group of friends I was hanging out with last year, um, they do social media stuff too. They had said to me about like two months after hanging out with them, they were like, you're never on your phone. And I was like, yeah, no, I rarely go on my phone. And they were like, you would think that you would be on your phone a lot doing what you do. And I'm like, I fucking hate my phone. If I'm with people, I love the fact that I don't have to be on my phone. Sure to like take photos and videos for fucking Snapchat, (laughs) Snapchat, Instagram, like whatever. But I'm not, I don't Snapchat a ton of people. I don't text a bunch of people. I'm not like sitting in my DMs, DMing a bunch of people. I don't fucking care. The fact that I think I might find a husband through my DMs is so terrifying. Like, what? That's so scary. I honestly probably will though. I'm not going to lie. I I don't like my phone. I don't like social media. I don't looking at, like looking at other people's lives on a daily fucking basis. Sure, a few people that I'm interested in, yes, but your phone will make you fucking sad and I don't want to go on mine, but literally mine's the only fucking way of contacting people. I'm talking the few girls I've been talking to. One lives in New Jersey. One lives in New York. Katie lives in Nashville. My other friend lives in California. Two of these people who I can, I got connected with because we all were going through breakups. Actually, I'm sorry. Three of these people I got connected with because we were all going through breakups. And it's like, I love that phones can connect us with so many different people, but I just, I, I've been craving like human interaction (laughs) so bad. Um, and then I've also gotten like picky. I've gotten really picky with who I want to be around, which I don't want to be, but I made this, I said this a while back. I was like, don't be friends with shitty people just to have people. I just think who you surround yourself with, you do become. And what you're surrounded yourself with does motivate you. It does demotivate you if they're the wrong people. And, you know, I like to be around shit that motivates me if I'm going to. Um, Or just people that I trust. I feel like I've hung around a lot with people that I don't trust at all. And why do people lie? Do you guys experience that? I don't know if it's an age thing. I don't know if social media has done it to people, but like the amount of people I don't talk to anymore because they just lie. Like, I don't get why people just lie. Why is that a thing? And does that deteriorate with age? Like, I don't get that. And I'm not even talking about like lying about they got caught up doing something they shouldn't have and then they lie about it. I mean like pathologically fucking lying. Like does anyone have people in their lives where they're just like, yeah, man, I just did this and I'm doing that tomorrow and then I got this girl coming over and blah, blah, but it's all a lie. When did that start and why? It's so fucking weird. It's so weird. I don't get it. So I cut a lot of that off because it was just getting weird and I was like, wait, this is just odd. And I don't know. I just, I don't think I pushed people away. I just kind of was like, took off the rose colored glasses for a second <laughs> i gave you the world and you fell for it anyways though so that's my life update and that's what i've been doing 2024 i know i've been saying you got to get up in the mornings get out of bed don't do it at 2 p.m my sleep schedule has been a little bit fucked up but i've been getting up i've been working out i've been doing it i haven't been too motivated at all to make videos um and i know it sounds so stupid and it just sounds like bitch just get off your fucking like ass and do it I need to I really do I've been spending a lot of time trying to be around my family and like my mom because I'm so lucky that I have them in a relationship with them because I just yeah I really really struggle when I don't have plans or things going on or people I need people life is beautiful with people they say that's like a quote a beautiful life is a life filled with the those the ones you love or something a life that's better than yours so yeah that's what I've been craving I've been craving just human interaction also oh my god can we talk about like when you get out of a relationship that you were in for a little bit and then just like you crave human touch (laughs) ew no literally though like I'm like with my stuffed animals at night and I'm like literally making one of their arms like wrap around me and I'm like oh thank god I like actually like miss touch it's a that's a thing that's a thing um 
But yeah, nothing's been happening in my life. It's been pretty fucking boring. I did slide into one um, hot athletes DMs. That went nowhere. So <laughs> rip me. Loki gonna do a few more maybe. Me and Bailey did talk about maybe getting an apartment like in the same building. But I think she's gonna stay in her hometown for a little bit which I fully support I think that'll be good for her I don't know it's just weird but I think this summer is gonna be pretty wild I feel like it's also just winter time not a lot of people are doing things not a lot's going on so everyone kind of feels this way but yeah I'm just ready for the warm weather and whether that means I'm sitting in my back fucking yard in a baby pool drinking high noons alone or on a boat with some people I found Either way, it sounds better than this cold, cold winter of hibernation. Blessed to be alive. Glad that we're back on Was That TMI. I just wanted to kind of do an updated episode because I was gone for a minute and literally fucking nothing's gone on. I had a ladybug in my bathroom and that was like giving me a lot of hope to get up every day because we would literally say hi to each other every morning. I did throw her away today though down the toilet because I figured out it's not a ladybug, it's an Asian beetle that will bite me actually and they infest your homes and they smell bad so we had to say goodbye to her she's down on the ground now let's see though let's see some of y'all's write-ins okay this girl said so basically my best friend has been dating this boy and before they got together she told me to go for him so it's known that i like him well they both cheat on each other and i was just wondering if you think that same you can have him energy will continue once they break up with her still being friends with me um you know probably not (laughs) Um, honestly, the way I'm seeing it or that I would think that this might have gone down is I could see like me liking a guy. And then if I have a friend that likes them too, me being like, oh yeah, go for it. Because if the guy liked, didn't like me, I wouldn't want it anyways. I feel like that's a thing. I've always said like, I can get any guy I want and people are like, shut the fuck up. And I'm like, no, because genuinely if a guy doesn't want me, I don't want fucking anything to do with him. Like, If I actually am going to have feelings for a guy, it's going to be because he likes me. Here's the thing. If you go and you look up my name and you see the shit I'm doing and you have any interest, I get fucking lucky. So So I think that if a guy's like, no, I'm like, there's no shot. Actually, when I slid in this guy's DMs the other day, sorry not to get up off topic. He was like, oh, like, I'm going to go watch your podcast. And I was like, please don't. Please, please don't. You're going to be really fucking scared. I think that maybe she was saying go for him to see if he would even like give you the time of day or if he liked her because I think that's kind of an awkward situation if you're best friends and a guy gives both of you attention like that's kind of weird in a like relationship or intimate way but now that they're dating even though they cheat on each other I doubt if they break up she'll be okay with you going for him also why do you want someone who's a cheater also there's a lot of people in the world don't go for that man fuck that friendships are more important so this person said so last year i was talking to this boy let's call him mike love the fucking names mike and i were pretty serious but i ended things with him because he started acting really strange towards me Ooh, off odd why did i say off He was so romantic and so nice to me usually, but sometimes would ignore me for days saying it was quote unquote lore, whatever the fuck that is and would act super strange at times. What the fuck is lore? L-O-R-E? Let me look this up. Um, that's your first red flag. After us, Mike got a new girlfriend. (gasps) They were dating for maybe six months, but two days ago I get a text from Mike asking to hang out as friends and catch up. Hmm okay he told me he broke up with his girlfriend because she cheated so i was fine with seeing him as long as they were just friends last night he started flirting with me over text and even admitted to wanting to date me in the future i would date him too tbh but stupid me decided to stalk after stalking oh my god can we talk about stalking can we talk about stalking i went okay hold on hold on going through a breakup going through any sort of anything with a man if he's cheated on you if you guys broke up if you just really are obsessed with him he doesn't give a flying fuck about you ladies 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 don't stalk don't look don't look what you don't know can't hurt you and you will be so much better off going three fucking weeks without seeing them on social media or in person if you live near them you'll be so much better not seeing them for three weeks and then seeing them again because you'll 
sorry, hate to say it. I think this just happens. You're going to see them in those three weeks and be like, oh, that's not what they looked like in my head when I was making up fake false scenarios with them. You know, I think it's like social media is so fucking hard nowadays with this type of shit and drives us insane because the stalking you can do will make you literally crazy. Don't do it. You will feel so much better once you stop. Not going to lie. My position, especially being with guys, I've been with guys I've been with multiple people who are online and, you know, they're posting every day as well. So getting out of relationships with these people, looking at their shit every day, only going to fuck me up, only going to fucking make me want to check myself into a mental hospital. Um, Don't do it. You're going to drive yourself mad. You're going to drive yourself insane. And then when you stop doing it, you realize like, oh, wait, I don't think about this person as much. So don't stalk. But let's see. You went and stalked. After stalking, I found all of Mike's posts with his girlfriend are deleted, but she still comments on his TikToks. I looked at her Instagram and she has no posts with him, but on her TikTok, there's a bunch of vids with him from earlier in the month and her bio still says, I love my BF. Sus. Also sus that he makes TikToks. Sorry. I can't even say that. She also just posted a video of her in a hotel room today. So now I'm starting to think she's away for the weekend and Mike just wants to use me to cheat. <gasps> Mike, you dirty fucking dog. I honestly don't know what to do. I low key regretted cutting things off with him because I missed him, but I don't want to be the other woman. What the fuck do I do? Mike, damn. Mike's on that bike, that cheating bike. Fuck you, Mike. Yeah, so Mike and Ike, I think, are still together from what I'm hearing. Um, honestly, if you do see him, if you're like, damn, I do want to see him, walk in that bitch and call him out on his shit. Be like, so what's going on? Why'd you guys break up? She cheated on you. Was Mike a liar? He seems like he was a liar. Be like, well, she was cheating on you. Like what? She cheated on you. Explain to me like what happened. See how he explains it. See if he thinks he's lying and then be like, oh, and be like, yeah, one of her um, TikToks popped up in my FYP. Always get some boys are fucking stupid as shit. One of his TikToks pops up in my FYP. He's going to be like, oh, really? You're going to be like, yeah, her fucking bio still says I love my boyfriend. So like what's going on with that? Are you guys still getting together? Mike is going to be shaking in his fucking jail cell. Um, yeah, it seems like seems like he's still with her. We could be wrong, though. Maybe she just feels bad and wants him back and is begging for him back. I wouldn't go into that with any um, feelings, though, because it seems as if. I don't know, like when you get out of a relationship and you hit up your ex immediately, it, unless they're just trying to be your friend, I feel like it's kind of just like you're hoping to go back to something for the comfort. Not saying he's doing that. He might be in love with you, but not gonna lie I've had an ex mm, I've had mm. <laughs> I've had a few exes that um have came to me immediately after breakups even ones from like a really really long time ago even people I've just had flings with that like right as they're going through a breakup immediately hit me up and I'm sure along with other people they've talked to before this relationship but it's just kind of like such a red flag already you're just like oh my god like they're just getting out of this and they're just needing comfort of like someone you know I would say stay away. Oof, 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 oof. Oh, I just got chills. My boyfriend's crazy ex. Oh, that's never good to hear. Okay, it says, my boyfriend of a year and a half. We live in a small town and gossip gets around. Two days into my relationship, she was already texting him. Mm, red flag. She also hated me, even when I didn't know who she was or who my boyfriend was. She's jealous. I go away for school, so I'm usually the last to know what's been said about me and my relationship. She spreads lies about my boyfriend staying in communication with her. Lies about how I'm delusional. She sent me screenshots, but I have no screenshots. She talks to my boyfriend's friends to communicate with him. She has DM'd me and tried to add me on social media she tells lies to people in town and to my own friends i keep thinking maybe i am delusional and i don't know how to handle this what do i do oh i wish we had you on the phone i'm curious to know how your boyfriend is responding to all of this how's he responding because my only thing is that also, do you live with your boyfriend when you go out of town? Two days into the relationship, she was texting him. So I'm guessing your boyfriend has her blocked now because you said she reaches out to his friends. But year and a half, that's a long time to keep reaching out with no response. Don't you think? Don't we all agree? Let's say you have an ex. You still like him. He gets a new girlfriend and you text him two days into the relationship. 
and then you're still doing that a year and a half later and you're trying to get a hold of his girlfriend either you're really really psycho and won't take no as an answer or i mean clearly she's still obsessed with the dude this is crazy that it's been going on for that long why do i kind of believe the other girl a little bit that's just she's doing a lot if there's if it's all made up she's just doing a lot i think i would maybe add her and see what she has to say she might just be psycho though too i don't know though that sounds a little sounds really fucking sus i can't lie this is our last one we're gonna do how to be bold with guys and not get awkward okay actually perfect fucking example so i was in tampa as i said <laughs> i did blackout at yeah at a certain point in the middle of the day chad i came out of my blackout it was like kind of in and out but I still knew what was going on. But then I came out of it to me rising up just someone who I did not need to be talking to. Um, and I don't know what I was saying. My favorite thing to do, my favorite fucking thing to do to guys recently is like get them alone. Stop, stop. I'm getting PTSD right now. Whenever I'm in like a bar scene or anything and there's like a guy that I like, I'm always like, okay, let's go. Like, let's go on a walk and we're going to talk what no chad loves saying that to people and i came out of my blackout saying that to someone who i did not need to be fucking saying that to and i was like remembering it the next day and i was like fuck oh my fucking god fuck, why did i do that we didn't go on a walk by the way but my biggest tip if you're like trying to get attention from a guy i think just be yourself literally just be yourself and be confident and if they don't want it it's like okay okay cool bye next um later that later that night in tampa th this guy appeared at like the post game that was happening and oh he's such a beauty he was like six three like 210 pounds he was an athlete so i found that out ew <laughs> every girl does that i don't care and you know i'm just sitting there and i see him from across the counter and i'm like damn that guy's kind of fucking hot and then later that night i'm like i said something to him i was like do you know who that person is and he was like no i have no idea and i was like he looks pretty old to be here and he was like yeah he does then i'm just talking to him I'm like wait so who are you like where are you from talking to him and then i was kind of tipsy he sits down and i just was like you're really fucking attractive and he was like thanks and he was like so are you and i was like thanks but it's like just that alone kind of gives you a vibe, you know, it's and it's like if they're like, the fuck, like, why did she say that? You're fucking complimenting them. If they act weird about it, follow it up with like, you're not my type, but like you're an attractive person, you know, like just nothing can ever be too awkward with this big living on a fucking like rock. Shoot your shot. That's all I'm going to say. Shoot your shot. Who cares? Even the guy at the bar that I was rizzing up that I did not need to be. I had no riz, by the way. I don't know why I keep saying that. <laughs> Even if he were to be like later that day to his friends, bro, that bitch was weird as fuck. I'd be like, no, I wasn't. I was fucking drunk and I was just trying to like have a conversation with him and be friendly. He looked lonely. Like just flip the narrative every fucking time. Just the things that you worry about when trying to talk to a guy. It, it's not that deep. That's literally how you have to look at it. It's just like, it's not that deep. Who cares? Oh no, the memory card died. Okay. Anyways, though, that was the last question. Car's trying TMI, I've missed you. I love you guys. I'm sorry. I don't want these episodes to be sad and boring, but you're just getting through life with me right now. We're in a weird stage. Also, Tracy is indeed for sale. Rip. Um, Tracy's getting sold, unfortunately, but I love you guys so much and we're going to keep podcasting. I'm not going to leave you guys like I did that one time back in 2021. I'm here. We're getting there. Life is on its up. I can feel it. I love you. I love you. I love you to the moon and back and TMIers. You still my TMI girls. We out. Bye. Love you. Austin, I finished. You can come out of the closet now. <laughs> Holy fuck. Bruh. <laughs> Oh my god, get me the fuck out of this house, damn it.
Love you.